Okay, folks, look, you seen we don't put them eggs together. We got that going. You read that title. Today, we're just going ahead to make, listen, these are deviled eggs, right? But we adding fried shrimp. Let's get it. You guys see, there's a few ingredients out here. Look, this is not, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel. This is just going to be a great tasting, you know, deviled egg recipe, right? But the fact of the matter that we're going to deep fry some uh, shrimp and put that on top, just that combination, and then whatever sauce you guys like to have, I might make a bang bang. I haven't really decided yet, but real easy. And don't forget, the full ingredient list will be on my website, smokinganddrillingwithab.com, and that's W-I-T-A-B.com. Now, I'm getting ready to start with my shrimp. Look, I've already peeled and deveined my shrimp. Look at that right there. These are ready to go, right? So I'm gonna go ahead. You guys can season with whatever you would like. Again, if you go to my uh, website, I have on my website the exact measurements to put something else in here. If, just in case you don't have any of this Creole kick, I just add just a little bit to this. What we wanna do is let this Creole kick to soak in, right? You just want it to soak in to the fleshy part of the shrimp. That way we get that good, nice Creole got a little bite to it you know taste to it right so i do that that's the first thing i do should look like this it's just a little bit of fresh cracked black and then just a tad bit of smoked paprika all right now i'm gonna get back in here and remix it make sure all of the shrimp is coated you know properly now we set this off to the side right so i'll set that right there now what I want to do is get my little station together, you know what I mean, as far as my seasoning, because we're going to have two. We're going to have a wet and a dry, right? So I'm going to add my flour here, all right? Then I'm going to add a little garlic powder and onion powder, all right? And this is powder, folks, not salt. And then just a little bit of Creole kick, just a little bit. And then you just go ahead and whisk it. Okay, because if we don't have so much flour, you know what I mean? If you're doing six eggs, that'll give you a dozen, you know, deviled eggs. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just add my panko over here. You know what I mean? We just add something like this, right? I just pat this like this, because this is how we're gonna put it on. It's okay, because that's where we're gonna go to flour, then wet, and then back after we drip, we're gonna finish with panko. We're gonna put them on a cooling rack. And by the time I finish doing all of them, then we're gonna fry. All right, so when you look like that, you guys don't have to do that. If you got like smaller bowls, you can do that. For me, since I wash my own dishes, I like to just utilize. If I can do this, this will be just fine, right? So now we already have, you know, our, our eggs already hard boiled, right? So now let's go ahead and start cutting these down. All right, so we're gonna do it just like this, right? So I just take it, I don't cut it this way, folks, cause they not gonna stand up. Some people, I've seen people do that and they like, oh, I made a mistake, right? So we just cut this down. I know I'm cutting towards my hand, but you know, I don't know no other way than not look. They just pop right out. Now, when you guys boil your eggs, I want you guys to talk to me and tell me how do you do them? Do you put your eggs in the, uh, the water or the pot before it's hot and then stick it on there? Or do you start with boiling water? For me, you guys saw in the very beginning, I start with the boiling water. And then how long do you go? If you want your eggs to look like this, this was them boiling the whole complete time. And uh, that was uh, 15 minutes. Okay, so now that I got all of my stations set up, only thing I hadn't done was crack my two eggs. You know what I mean? Because we're gonna whisk those together. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add my mayo here, right? Now, notice what I'm using right here. Salad cubes, right? Sweet salad cubes. These are the bigger ones. They're not as big as they I think they used to be, but if you guys pay attention right there, look at that. You can see the dice on the pickle is a little bit bigger and this is sweet. Now I know sometimes I always ask you guys, I'm always curious to find out who is the people that like to have deal in their, you know, potato salad or, you know, or even having your deviled eggs like this, right? So I'm gonna start off before I start whisking. You know what I mean? Uh, we're gonna start with just mashing the yolks, right? Just pushing those down and start to get everything incorporated this way. But I usually start with a fork first. All right, once I got it like this, I'm looking at the consistency and I really like what I see. I don't need no more mayo, right? I like to always shake up my, my mustard. Tell me, do you guys like when you open up the mustard and they give you that little wetness? You know what I mean? You don't wanna have that. Now, when it comes to the mustard, you guys put in as much as you would like. I start with a little. Mustard has such a strong taste, that usually does it, right? So, I'm gonna hit it with a little fresh black that's freshly cracked. And just a tiny pinch of uh, kosher salt, right? 
And I don't know about y'all, I look at this color and I like it. I do like the sweetness of adding uh, ketchup to it too, but it just be very, very small. But for the sake of the police out there, I know they're gonna be like, hey B, you know that ain't the way we get out and do it. But it probably is, but for me, I like mine that way. Now, I'm getting ready to add just a touch, just a hint, right? Of this Creole kick. Oh, that's, that's, that's it right there. Just enough to give it that bite, that little taste to keep up with the theme. If you guys don't have Creole kick, go ahead and use any Creole, you know, you can use any type of Creole seasoning that you have. Okay, so now you want to get yourself like a Ziploc bag, right? I'm using one of those Ziploc sandwich bags. That'll work just fine for me. You know what I mean? Uh, no need taking a gallon bag and just, you know, for this little bit of filling, right? This is what we're going to use to pipe in the filling inside of the, you know, the eggs. All right, folks. So I put it in my hand like this. I just hold the top. No need to seal it. I try to get me one of these corners. Now, don't forget I use salad cubes, right? The bigger your dice is on your... Uh, how do I say that? The bigger your dice is on your pickles, the bigger the hole gonna have to be on this end, right? So that you can get that filled, right? So then you don't wanna make it too runny because if you make it too runny, then you know, it kinda like just overfill, right? So just like that. Right now I'm just getting a little bit of, you know, pressure from my hand. Look at this right here. But they feels nicely. See how it stops up right there? That's just all of the relish trying to get out of there. All right? We do the same thing over here. All right, you feel them as much as you would like to. We're gonna put these in the refrigerator and let them firm up. And it's better when they're cold anyway. You know what I mean? So we just do them like this. Now we just put them in the refrigerator and we leave them in here until we get everything fried and ready to go. Now we get our wet station together, which is just two, you know, eggs whisked together. I think I'm gonna do it old school way. Just use a fork. Now, look, I put my candy thermometer in there because we want to go about 350 degrees, right? It's not going to take long, folks. Once they brown, flip them on the other side, and the amount of oil that I put in there is just about enough to coat them halfway, and then when you know you flip them over to the other side. You don't need to, it, you know what, let me just say it this way. If you guys got enough oil, I'm trying to cut down on my oil waste, right? It's always a hassle getting rid of it anyway. So you know what I mean? If you want to, you can go ahead and fill them up so that you can like submerge them and get them done that way. But for me, we're going to do a little flip. All right, as we building up our temperature, right? We already, you know, whisked our eggs together. We brought back our shrimp, which has been soaking in our seasoning. Now I'm gonna just go, I'm gonna do one like this just so you guys can see it, right? Just so that it makes sense, right? I'm gonna go ahead and grab it right here on the edge and bang it across on the edge right here to knock off any excess. Now I'm gonna put it inside, right? I'm gonna take it, flip it. Never had one that didn't want to flip before. There we go. Now, once you have it coated, I'm gonna take it, let it drip, any excess there. Now we're going into panko, right? Take this hand over here, just go ahead and cover him up like that. I'm gonna grab him, shake him, and just stage him right there. And that there, folks, is just how easy it is. Now, I'm getting ready to go in here and start doing all of these. Okay, folks, so listen, it rolls up to about 375. Now, remember, this is gonna cook extremely fast, right? So probably by the time that I get five of these in here, it's gonna be time to do whatever I'm gonna do with them, meaning if I'm gonna flip them or what. I already reduced my flame underneath the bottom. It is gonna cool just a little bit, right? So we start putting these in here just like you see. And they kind of like rise up anyway. These might just cook. Oh yeah, looking at what I have in here, these are probably gonna cook on their own. You know what I mean? Without me even having to flip them over. So we'll see. I got myself a little spider here. You know what I mean? I'm looking at them. Believe me when I tell you, they cook quick. All right, you see that right there? Look at that. That right there is what you want to get, that nice golden brown, right? So. I can move these around, they all floating. Oh yeah. That's what you want. That little dark spot right there, that's because I used a flavored, you know, like a seasoned panko. You guys can use plain if that's what you would like. But these is nice. Okay, so listen, I went and got the uh, 
Check it out. I went and got my deviled eggs out of the refrigerator. They nice and chilled. You can see how everything has started, you know, had already set. Now, I want to do this for you guys so you guys can just see. I'll just pick one of these. Hopefully you guys can hear it. Did you hear that? These is nice and crispy, folks. So I'm going to just take this. It's really about the size, too. I always seem to, like, overdo it. You know what I mean? So I'm going to try to take some of the smaller ones, you know, and just lay them right here like that. Right? So now I'm going to tell you like this. If you're making these for guests, it is okay for you to go ahead and make these ahead of time. You could just fry the shrimp the day of your event, right? Or the day you're having people over. Now, there's two reasons why I love, you know, making these, these deviled eggs like this, right? One of them is just for the taste. Listen, it's a lot of flavor. They marry together and it, you know, just turns your guests into like, hey, they turns them, it really turns them like into <laughs> to jelly. And the second is, look, the presentation. You set these out at different stations throughout your man cave or your living room or however you're doing if you're having an engagement. And I can tell you, uh, just having these out, you don't want to take pictures. People are going to ask you, hey, what is that? Now, I took this off the top. You know why? Because I'm going to go ahead and get me a bite. I don't know if y'all heard that crunch. When I said the fried shrimp, that's exactly what I meant. <laughs> these ain't going to last long, folks. So go ahead. Don't play with it. Go ahead and get yourself 36. You know what I'm saying? And then you put these out. So that'll put you what? 36 and 36 is 72, right, folks? So listen, you'll have 72. That's enough to put yourself out three different stations and let them eat, folks. They're going to feast. I promise you, all your work, mm, only thing you'll have left on your plate be like crumbs. Now, I want you guys to let me know. What would you do differently or what would you add? For me, you know me, I would like to add some bacon to it. But I kept it simple. Let the, flair, the flavors, you know, just marinate in your mouth when you put them together. It's just that combination. I promise you, simple does work, folks. Now, with that being said, let me take this time to say thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, smash that subscribe button, and tell everybody out there. There's a channel out here that's simplifying these recipes and taking the mystery out of cooking. And guess what, folks? You know what I'm about to do. I'm out. Peace.